Hello everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 3 of the tutorial series on Amazon Text Track. So guys, in this video, I'm going to take you through on how to extract key value pairs and tabular information from a receipt or a document using Amazon Text Track via Lambda function. So guys, as you can see on my screens, this is the same flow that we have followed in the previous tutorial. So in this tutorial, uh, the flow is going to remain as it is and we are going to reuse the resources that we have created in the previous tutorial except for the part that we need to update the lambda function code in order to extract key value pairs and the tabular information okay so we are going to modify that lambda function to satisfy our needs so let's get started so before we move on let's quickly have a look at the forms and the tables how it looks like on the console so this is the uh, sample document that is the form uh, document, right? So here we have the raw text and that is something that we have covered in the uh, previous video. Then we have forms. So forms are nothing but the key value pairs. So here we have like full name that is the key and Jane Doe is a name or a value, right? So that's basically key value pair. So here you can see all the key value pairs that has been uh, extracted or detected by the Amazon text track. And then we have tabular information that is tables. So if you have a tabular information or the table in any receipt and you want to extract that kind of structure, then you can use Amazon Text Track to extract such information. So here, as you can see, we have the information of the table that we can see on the left hand side, right? So now since we have an idea about how forms looks like and how tables looks like after it is extracted, of course, uh, once we receive the response, uh, we have to parse that response in order to um, fetch this kind of information. So that could be a little complex over there uh, to parse information from the response. Correct. So let's get started. Let's navigate to AWS management console and open Lambda management console from there because we want to modify the Lambda function code in order to extract key value pairs and the tabular information. So I have created text track hyphen Lambda in the previous video, I guess. So let me open that. And here we have that code. So again, uh, I have already uh, posted the code on the GitHub repository for extracting key value pairs and the table information. So I'm going to copy the code from there and I will paste the link of that GitHub uh, code in the video description. So you can refer that. So here I have two files basically. So I have created the parser.py as the helper file to parse the response that we are going to receive from the Amazon text track. Right. So the very first thing that we are going to do is open the lambda function dot py and we are going to copy this code. Copy and I'm going to replace this code with the new one. I will save it and say deploy. Now here in this code, what we are doing is uh, on line number 13, if you can have a look, then we are importing few functions from the parser, right? So that's the uh, helper file that I have created. So in order to reflect that, we also need to copy the code from parser.py. So I'm going to open parser.py and I'm going to copy this helper uh, functions. Go back to console, right click on the directory and say new file. And I will say parser.py. Say enter, open that file and paste the code that we have just copied. Save it and say deploy. Let me close this. Now I will quickly take you through this code at the very high level. So from line number 10 to line number 20, we are importing the packages that we require in order to send the request to the Amazon text track and parse the response, right? So that's why we are using JSON, Boto3, pprint to uh, pretty print the uh, response. And then we are importing a couple of functions from the parser.py that is from here, okay? So here we are uh, importing extract underscore text. So this is the same function. If you want to, for example, extract the raw text or, uh, or the text line by line or by word, then you can use this method. So this is the same method that we have created in the previous video, but I had just uh, placed that uh, method in the parser.py and importing it from there. Okay, then we have a map word ID. So in an individual response, whatever response that we get, the text uh, is always represented as a part of block type word and it has the specific ID, right? 
So even if we uh, look at a block type line, then it does not contains the actual text. Instead, it contains the relationship and and the type of the relationship is child. And that's where we have few ID and that ID basically represent the block type word, which contains the text, right? So that's where we are mapping uh, the word ID or the particular ID with the word. And then uh, we have function for extract table information. Then uh, for key value pair extraction, the very first thing that we are doing is mapping the key. Then we are mapping the uh, value. And finally, we are passing the uh, key value information to get the actual key value pairs. Okay, so that's where uh, I have created a couple of helper function. So this is the initial code. Maybe I will uh, uh, improve this code in future, modify this and I'm going to uh, push that update on the GitHub itself. So you will be able to get the latest update of that code from there. Now going back to the Lambda function. So here we have the Lambda handler function on line 24. We are defining the Boto3 uh, object of text track service, right? Then on line 25, we are checking if there is an event. So we are checking if there is any information in the event. Then we are proceeding further. Then we are fetching the file object to get the bucket name and the file name because that is something that we will need in order to uh, pass it to the Amazon text track, right? We need to pass the reference of the file name that where it is located and what is the name of the file to the Amazon text track in order to uh, perform the extraction part, right? So that's where we need that information. On line number 30, we are printing the bucket name and the file name. Now on line number 32, here we are using texttrack.analyze document. So earlier, if we want to perform only OCR, then we were using detect document text method, right? But since we want to extract key value pairs and the tabular information, we are using the another method that is analyze underscore document. This method that is analyze underscore document will perform OCR by default. So if you want to uh, grab the line by line information or word by word information, then it's going to return that information as well. Okay, so whatever detect document text will do, analyze document will also do. But in addition to the OCR, it will also perform the extraction of the key value pair or the tables based on your requirements or whatever parameter that you are passing from here. Okay, now within analyze document, we are passing the reference of the uh, file that we have uploaded. So within document, we are saying it's the S3 object. And then we are passing the reference that is uh, the file is in this bucket and the name of the file is whatever the file name is. And then uh, if you have enabled versioning, then you can also uh, pass the version of that file that which version uh, Amazon text track should pick, right? But at this point of time, I don't have versioning enabled. Now, finally, we have feature types. Now here you need to uh, tell Amazon text track that uh, what kind of information you want to extract from the document. So for example, if you want to extract key value pairs, then you have to pass forms, right? And then if you want to also extract the tabular information, then you will pass forms comma tables. And for example, if you only want to extract the tabular information, then you have to pass tables only. You need to remove this forms, right? So you can play around with this. So you can say, I want only tabular information. Then you can remove this forms over here and you can only pass tables. But at this point of time, if you want both the information like key value pairs as well as the tabular information, so you need to pass uh, both the uh, keyword, right? That is forms and tables. So that's where uh, it will extract key value pairs and the tabular information as well. So you can play around with these parameters. And finally, after that on line number 42, we are printing the response that we are getting from the uh, text track dot analyze underscore document. Okay. And then on line number 44, we are extracting the text that is the OCR information from the response that we are getting. So if you want to extract the text line by line, then you can pass this parameter that is extract by line. Or if you want uh, individual word, right, then you can say word over here. So it's similar to whatever we did in the previous video. Then on uh, line 45, we are creating a mapping that is a key value pair that ID colon the uh, whatever word or the text it has, right? So it will be easy later on to look up, right? So that's where we are creating the uh, word ID mapping. Then uh, on line 46, we are extracting the tabular information or the table information. Then if you want to extract the key value pair, then uh, here we are performing on line 47 is the uh, key mapping. 
followed by the value mapping and then we are uh, passing both the mapping to the get kv underscore map method that will basically return the uh, key value pair right that uh, whatever for example uh, it will return full name uh, colon john jane doe right so that's the key value pair and finally on line 51 to 53 we are printing that information and on line 55 we have a return statement uh, that is status code 200 and some message so this is the very high level of the code so you can go through this parser.py if you want to uh, uh, deep dive into how it is parsing the response and as i mentioned i'm going to optimize this function at later point of time okay so now I think uh, we have uh, done all the changes that was required. So here we don't need to modify any sort of um, permission or anything, or we don't need to set up any S3 bucket trigger because uh, that is being set up already in the previous video. And in case if you are directly looking at this video, then I will recommend that please refer a uh, part two of this video first so that you will be on the same page, right? Now as the next step, we are going to open the S3 bucket uh, where we have set up the trigger. So in my case, it's track track video tutorial. So here is the bucket and here we have one file that is sample receipt, but instead we are going to upload uh, the same file again. So I'm going to say sample underscore receipt, say upload. So here, if everything is configured correctly, then we will be able to see the response in the cloud watch. So go back to Lambda function, say monitor, say view logs in CloudWatch. So as you can see, uh, we have the logs that has been populated. Uh, that is the latest one. So click on that. So now as you can see here, we have the information that we have printed that is bucket name and the file name followed by the response that we are printing, whatever response that we are getting from the Amazon text track. Uh, that is something over here. Then we have table information. So as you can see, so each, uh, each list basically represent the individual row, right? So here, uh, this is one row, then we have a second row over here. Okay. And wherever the information is empty or blank uh, over there, I have placed space like this. Correct. So here, uh, it is able to extract two tables. So let's, uh, let's compare, right? So let me go back to Amazon text track console and let me, uh, drag and drop this file over here. So we are just verifying. So I am going to click on tables. So here, as you can see, we have two tables, right? So that is uh, this receipt information. Then we have uh, sub items information, correct? So here, as you can see, this is blank. So that's where I have placed a uh, space over that. So you can modify as per your requirement, right? So this is uh, table number one, and then we have the uh, receipt table over here, correct? So it is able to extract two tables. Then we have key value pairs. So here, as you can see, total $154, receipt date, due date. Let's quickly verify it. Let me click on form. So here, as you can see, we have total, then receipt, receipt date, ship to terms and condition. So here we have terms and condition, ship to sales tax. So this is how the key value pair looks like. And finally, at the very end, we are printing the uh, OCR text that is being extracted, I think, line by line. So basically, this is how you can extract the uh, tabular information as well as key value pair using Lambda function via Amazon text track. Correct. So now uh, let's quickly go through the response that we have here. Let me open that copy. So here I have this JSON formatter open. Let me copy and paste. I will say format beautify. Now, as you can see, uh, here we have the response. So in the previous tutorial, we had uh, gone through a few of the block type and the a few other parameters, right? Like geometry, polygon, ID, relationship. So in this video, what we will quickly have a look at is the block type table. So let me search for table. So here we have block type table and under that we have confidence score, uh, geometry information, polygon information and its ID. And similarly, it has relationship type as child and this is the list of uh, a relationship or the child object that it has. So this individual ID will represent block type cell, right? So what does it mean that this table contains this cell? Okay. So if I have to copy this child ID, copy and paste and I will search for it. 
So as you can see, it is representing block type cell over here, right? So this is the ID of the block type cell under that table. And within block type cell, we have the confidence score row index that on which index this particular information has been identified or detected. Then we have column index, row span, if any, row, column span, if any. Then again, we have geometry and polygon information. And then it has its own ID, right? And again, this ID has the relationship that is of type child. Now here, as you can see, we are unable to see the text for the particular uh, cell, right? So as I mentioned earlier also that all the uh, text is uh, visible in the block type word. So now if I have to copy this child ID and search for it, then this will be the ID of block type word as you can see. Okay. And here we will be able to find the text that is text is quantity for that particular cell that is on row index one and column index one, right? We can verify as well. So as you can see, this is the row index one and the column index one and it's QTY. Okay. So basically that is how the information is being uh, represented over here. Correct. So that's uh, similar for all the cell types and the block type uh, table. Okay. Now let's quickly have a look at the key value pair. So here we have block type key value set basically for the key value pair information. Now here we have again confidence and the standard uh, terms, right? That is geometry polygon and its ID. But what's new here is that under relationship we have type as value. So it means that this is a key, right? Uh, this ID represents key and the value of this key is under this ID. Okay. And then uh, if you want to identify whether it is a key or a value, then you need to have a look at the entity types. So if it is a key, then it's the key and for values, the entity types would be value. Okay. So you can have a look over here. So entity types is value. Okay. Let's quickly parse this. So here we have key value set. Now the value of this key is under this ID. Let me copy, find it, paste it over here. So here is the ID and this key value set and the entity type is value. Okay. So basically that key and this value are related. Okay. And again, here we are not able to see any of the text that what is the text of the key and what is the text of the value. Okay. And for that you need to specifically refer to the relationship of type child. Okay. So this is the value. Let me quickly search for it. What is the text? So it's basically $154. Okay. And then if we look at the text of the key, here it is. And the key was this one, right? And what is the value of that key or basically text? Then it is total, right? So total colon $154, right? So that's the first key value pair. Even if we look over here within forms, then here we will be able to see that total 154.06 dollar, right? So basically this is how the key value pair information is present in the uh, response that you get. So you need to parse this and that's where I have written the helper function to parse this information. Okay. So guys, uh, basically this is how you can extract the key value pairs and the tabular information from the receipt or the document uh, that you upload. So guys, that's all I wanted to cover as a part of this video. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.